Good evening and welcome to the API, a program produced, presented and aired at Tuesdays and Thursdays by the Agency for Public Information. We keep you up to date with all the latest developments in government policies and projects. On today's program, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines hands over another six houses in Carrotal, Georgetown, and more offer letters for lands at 10 cents per square foot to residents of Spring Village, Georgetown. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines provides mobile phones and tablets to surviving students of the rock gutter tragedy through the assistance of telecommunications company Digicel and the National Lotteries Authority. And as usual, on a Thursday evening, we'll end with an IADC update. The details to these stories when we return. But first, here is News Watch with Ashishia Sam. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us for News Watch. I'm Ashisi Assam. More health workers here are now better trained and able to meet the growing needs of the health sector in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This as the graduation of the first cohort of Level 1 in the Caribbean field of epidemiology and laboratory training program took place on Monday, April 27 at the Paradise Beach Hotel. The program began in March 2014, and after a few months of in-class and field training, the participants were presented with certificates of completion of Level 1 and token of appreciation from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. The field epidemiology training programs are development initiatives for public health professionals and are designed to build Caribbean capacity in the prevention of diseases as well as the promotion and protection of health. Participants got the opportunity to develop their skills and acquire new tools to respond to public health issues in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the wider Caribbean. Tuesday, April 28 was celebrated globally as World Day for Safety and Health at Work. As part of activities to mark the occasion, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, in collaboration with the Central Water and Sewage Authority, CWSA, held an exhibition on the grounds of the CWSA compound. The exhibition displayed a range of safety equipment and gear used for specific fields of work, along with an information booth. The exhibition also received support from local corporate citizen shepherds training through the provision of safety gear and equipment for display. World Day for Safety and Health at the Workplace was celebrated under the theme Join in Building a Culture of Prevention on Occupational Safety and Health. St. Vincent Electricity Services Limited Vinlec will be launching its Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month on May 4. Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month seeks to heighten awareness among staff members on environmental health and safety matters, as well as promote a culture of health and safety within the organization. The feature address will be delivered by General Manager of Housing and Land Development Corporation, Mr. Kenyatta Aline. Other addresses will be made by Chairman of Vinlex Board, Ms. René Batiste, CEO Tony Mez, and General Secretary of the National Workers' Movement, Mr. Noel Jackson. The launch of Vinlex Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month will be held at Kane Hall Engineering Center from 1.30 p.m. on May 4. Several other activities will be held throughout the month of May as part of activities to mark Environmental Health and Safety Awareness Month. The West St. George Secondary School recently celebrated its 10th anniversary of operation. Despite its short existence, it has already made its mark in the West St. George constituency and on the education landscape of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is reflected in its facilitation of molding the lives of many more students from the constituency and in its high ranking in the top 10 secondary schools in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, based on its in excess of 65% pass returns in the 2014 external exams.
From inception, the school's policy embraced the use of sports, culture, music, and the arts as building blocks to supplement the academic side of the school's growth and development. They have achieved all with steady advances and achievements at all levels across all disciplines. The school's music program started some eight years ago and they can proudly boast of producing good vocal talents and good players of various musical instruments which is reflected in the school's band. Through the collaboration of Parliamentary Representative Honorable Cecil Mackey, Mr. Robert McBarnett, and the St. Matthias Charity Inc. of New York, the school was the recipient of two keyboards to advance its music program. This gesture is in keeping with a commitment made by the St. Matthias Charity Inc. in 2014 to provide further support for the school. At that time, they donated a piano and several stationary items, equipment and medical supplies to the school. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, has launched its Young Professional Program for 2015. This program aims to improve the geographical distribution of the Secretariat and attract young and talented professionals. Applicants must not be more than 32 years of age and must hold an advanced university degree with specialization in any of the following fields. Education, Natural Sciences, Social and Human Sciences, Culture, Communication and Information, External Relations, Legal Affairs and Financial Management. Applicants are required to present necessary documentation to prove eligibility. All information must be submitted to the National Commission for pre-selection process no later than July 1, 2015. Further information can be obtained from the Commission, Ministry of Education at telephone number 451-2755 or 457-2676 or email unescosvg at gov.vc or janilh at hotmail.com. Here's where we end the news watch for this evening. I am Ashisia Sam. Do stay with us. The API's presentation continues. Two islands and keys are waiting to be discovered. Take a look at us now. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. If you've just joined us, you're viewing a presentation of the Agency for Public Information. On our featured presentation this evening, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines handed over six additional houses to residents in Carrotal, Georgetown on Monday last. The ceremony, which was attended by villagers and government officials, also saw the distribution of offer letters for lands at 10 cents per square foot for residents of Spring Village, Georgetown. The API's Shanna Daniel was there and tells us more in this report. <music> The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines continues to make great strides in providing houses to victims of natural disasters. In what could be described as one of its most successful policy initiatives, six persons whose houses were destroyed as a result of the December 2013 trough system received keys to new brand houses at Carrotal, Georgetown on Monday, April 27th. Additionally, the government has made it clear that it will continue to regularize squatter settlements. And as a result, Monday's handing over ceremony saw residents of Spring Village, Georgetown, receiving offer letters to lands which cabinet has approved for 10 cents per square foot. This government considers the poor, and that is why we are blessed Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said as he outlined the details of the project at Monday's handing over ceremony in Georgetown. 
we have already built 175 housing units for people and we have we have built we have rebuilt on the spot hundreds of houses since those storms and we have given out materials to further hundreds of persons so that they themselves could help to repair their houses the houses which are one bedroom they cost fifty five thousand dollars each those which are two bedroom they cost eighty thousand dollars each and we ain't deal with the price of the land so that the land itself is going to end up about seven dollars and fifty cents a square foot you will have about five thousand square feet on average for the latter land around here all right if you say this one might be four thousand let me lose a small number four thousand that's thirty thousand dollars for the land you put that pant up the eighty thousand dollars that's a hundred and ten thousand dollars we are putting inside of the hands of people a house a two-bedroom house valued at a hundred and ten thousand dollars what a government And for the one bedroom, for the one bedroom, it will be $85,000. And when you got the one bedroom and you watch them, you could add on another room because you got space. And I expect when I come up here that you're going to take care of the yard. You could plant up flowers, make the place look good. You could plant. A little vegetables you go have some little cucumber Saif. some save some balanje yes. you hear what i mean ah. meanwhile recipients of the houses and lands were overwhelmed and some expressed their gratitude to the prime minister and his government on the initiative we congratulate our prime minister Montgomery Colonel. Are there ministers, all the ministers, and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for what they have done to all of us around here? We never see them thing here go on around here for all the years gone. My mother and my father died, and I don't think they ever see a deed or a letter, whatever, to own a piece of land. And now we have seen it under this government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you, my Prime Minister, and thank you, Mr. Daniel, Ms. Davis, everyone who have joined to make this process happy for him. I am thankful from my bottom of my heart. Thank everyone. I'd like to say thanks to my Prime Minister and Montgomery Daniel. Without them, I could not have done this. And may God richly bless them and all those that who is with them. May God bless you all. I cry. I get tough. I get everything. But praise God for Ralph. Praise God for Ralph. No one can have my life. But God, I love Ralph. I love you. And a parliamentary representative for North Windward and Minister of Housing, the Honorable Montgomery Daniel, said that he's happy that the Garifuna people have benefited significantly from government's housing program. The housing minister said that housing projects will continue across St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This administration would have recognized that housing would have been a problem in this country. And the Garifuna communities of Sandy Bay Oya and Fancy has received its fair share for housing since 2001. But today we are here to hand over six houses to the persons who are affected under the December 13th floods. 
it was just last week Friday we handed out six houses in Connery and today we are here to hand over another six houses here at Caratel so that we would have previously handed out 163 houses since the project started. And today, add another 12 to the list. So as of today, this government, through the Ministry of Housing, has handed over 175 houses to the persons who were affected under the December floods 2013. There are ongoing works. We are continuing to build houses throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And so, while we are now at the number 175, it will not be too long when we reach that landmark of 200 houses to be built for the people of this country. Here at Caratel, I consider it to be one of the better housing areas that we would have developed so far. As you see, we have already put in the roads. We are putting in a playground in the back. Because a number of families, particularly on a Saturday, We'll go to the river. It is their culture to go to the river and bathe and wash. But we are putting in a more secure position where the mothers can put their children into that playground and they themselves can go and do their work. And speaking at the handing over ceremony, Chairman of the Housing and Land Development Corporation, Sir Vincent Beach, said that he's proud to be associated with the administration, which has proven to be a people-centered one. We are people-centered, this administration. Our prince told you that government, but it is not government, it's administration. We've had administration before where you had disasters, they come and they look at it. If the road is bad, they would fix the road. If you have a slide and they have to build a back wall, they will do that, but you have to fend for yourselves. We have, because of these disasters, and under the astute leadership of Montgomery Daniel, Minister of Housing, we have built and handed over in excess of 150 houses, free to persons who are affected by these disasters. Free. Other countries, you know, can't believe it. They say, we are lying. When we tell them this, they say, no, 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 you can't do that. You're lying. People living in shelters after Katrina. Sorry? People living in shelters after Katrina. Yeah. In the after Katrina in, in New Orleans, you still have people in the great United States living in shelters. We don't want that. And so we build these beautiful houses. The keys will be handed to you. They're free. Take care of them. Yes. And don't ask too much. We built some houses in South Rivers. Let me just tell you. And one gentleman got one of these houses. Never had a house before. He had a little shack. But when the houses were handed over to him, the next day he came down to us. He says, well, he gave me the key to the house. Who paid the water bill? I ain't going to call his name. He knows who I'm talking to. The person knows. He said, and who was going to pay the electricity bill? Now, this guy never had electricity before. So maybe he's right. I don't know. He never had water in his house before. He had to go in the river and dip it up. 
I am saying this to say that sometimes there are some of us who are very ungrateful that you get something free. And because it is free, you don't take care of, good care of it. We're asking you. It is yours. It's not government anymore. It's your house. Take care of it. Meanwhile, Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, Mr. Howie Prince, said that his agency can respond effectively to disasters because of the systems that government has put in place. Prince advised the recipients of the houses to take care and upkeep the properties which have been given to them free of cost. We have boasted that when we do things as far as the recovery process is concerned, we're building back better. When you look around these houses here in Caratal, these houses were built on a footing of something that is called flood proofing. You look at them. They have been set back from the river, at least far enough that they should not be significantly impacted, even if there is additional flooding in this valley. Secondly, they are all built on stilts. The premise being, if water runs through here, it should run straight under the houses, and the houses themselves should not be significantly impacted. I therefore want to use my last few moments to advise and to beg the recipients of these houses. There is good reason behind the way these houses have been built. So don't go and block up the, down, the, the houses to make downstairs. Don't go and block the houses around to make downstairs. If you do that, you may be putting yourself in harm's way. The science of the way these houses have been built is to make them as, full, as flood proof as possible. So if you block them wrong to get more space, dig a little bit deeper to put in the downstairs, you will put the houses in danger if there's flooding. I want you to remember that. And like I said to the people in, in Connery last week, make a little investment. Government is providing this house for you for free. Government is providing the land. The first money you get in your hand, put a little insurance on the houses. So that if something happens, you see one of the things that we can't cater for when it comes is fire. If these have one of these houses burned down, you are left with nothing. If you put a small insurance on them, the insurance company take the responsibility for providing you back a roof over your head. Make that small investment. The government has done the human task of putting together these houses for you, care them, live in them well, and I wish you well as you accept them today from the government and people of St. Vincent and Grenadines. The housing project at Caratel Georgetown has cost the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines an estimated one million EC dollars. All women rise up, stand up, hands up, give props. Your creation was magnificent. Yet you are born and raised to create, not destroy, not conquer, enslave, disgrace your fellow men. You are not born to kill, so chill, peace be still, take your fill, O oh, sons of the earth, your redemption is near. The lives you take, you break, create havoc, where there should have been a life of peace. The guns, the bombs you built fill me with terror and error that cannot be corrected. The seeds you sow, selling drugs on street corner, marijuana, let me warn you. Cocaine and crack create wars on our street, I repeat, brother cease. You built mass weapons of destruction, your instruction to take life by any means necessary. You congregate in secret to wage wars against the innocent Better repent, no sentiment, compliment Death is an instrument You arm yourself with hatred, envy, pride You make me cry, you lied Stab a brother in the side Still a cried when you died I ask the Lord to forgive this race of human savages The ravages the land from the north to the south Let me show peace, peace, love, unity to humanity you stand on street corner finger on your trigger This honest gold digger ready to take the life of a brother You are forgiven, the stars in heaven give reverend Woman dear witness, mother earth can't skip this Be prepared, judgment is tomorrow Thank you very much Reporting for the API, I am Shanna Daniel Comprehensive disaster management is about every one of us being ready to manage any natural or man-made event like earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, oil spills, volcanoes. It's about having your home or business prepared with an emergency plan and supplies. It's prevention, keeping your home, business or community well maintained and safe. It's about being able to get your life back on track after the event. Will you be ready? Visit WeReady.org, brought to you by Sadima and the European Union. 
A message from the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO. Welcome back to our program. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has provided mobile phones and tablets to surviving students of the rock gutter tragedy. This assistance was made possible by telecommunications provider Digicel and the National Lotteries Authority. Digicel provided the mobile phones while the tablets were made available by the National Lotteries Authority. The students were among other passengers of a minivan that plunged into the sea at Ratgutter on January 12th this year. The government saw the need to assist in replacing the students' devices which were lost in the tragedy. The devices were handed over to the students on Tuesday, April 21st at the Fancy Government School. We hear more in this report from the API's Ashishia Sam. At a ceremony to commission the new school bus in Fancy recently, Prime Minister Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzales proclaimed that he will be giving Fancy the best. Well, Dr. Gonzales has made good on this promise. On Tuesday, April 21, the Prime Minister handed over Samsung Galaxy Ace 4 smartphones and Acer B1 tablets to the surviving students of the Rock Gutter tragedy. This donation was made possible by Digicel and the National Lotteries Authority. Speaking at the handing over ceremony, Parliamentary Representative for North Windward, Honorable Montgomery Daniel, said he is pleased with the assistance the Prime Minister has been providing for his constituents since the tragedy. Today, what has been so good is that our Prime Minister continues to work very hard for the children and parents of Fancy. And he would have contacted Digicel to have means of communication for the children who were on that van on that fateful morning when the tragedy happened. The Prime Minister negotiated with the company Digicel, and today he has brought phones, I believe smartphones, as well as tablets for the surviving children of that tragedy. And I want to thank the Prime Minister very much for what he has been doing. Of course, All of these negotiations would have been going on through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Camilo Gonzalez. He is the point person who would have been on the ground doing this work, and I would also like to thank Camilo very, very much. We know that some of the students would have lost their cell phones and their tablets and so the government wants to assist in replacing them, and that's why we are here today. Minister with responsibility for information communications technology and point person for getting the phones for the students, Senator Camille Gonzalez, said he's pleased to assist in replacing the students' devices, which play a very important role in their lives at this critical stage. As you know, all Vincentians have been deeply affected by what took place at Rock Gutter. Not only Vincentians in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but as the Consul General was saying, Vincentians around the world and people from the Caribbean around the world have been very much affected by the terrible tragedy that has taken place in this community. And I wear two hats in the government. One is, of course, dealing with foreign affairs and the other one is dealing with technology and information communication technology. And I was struck listening to the Honorable Prime Minister and Montgomery Daniel, Minister Daniel, when they were talking about the fact that the students who survived the tragedy, of course, we have to give thanks for life. We have to be very grateful that they survived. But they lost a number of their material possessions because even though they may have been pulled out of the van or pulled out of the sea, 
they lost their book bags. Some of them had their laptops in their bags. They lost their cell phones. And so they were, again, although we give thanks for life, they were in a lesser position, position, position in terms of what they have, what they had materially. So as the minister for ICT, it bothered me that some of these students, for example, the ones that lost their laptops, would not be able to get onto the internet and do some of the schoolwork that they would have to do connected to the internet. And that if they lost their cell phones, of course you can get on the internet with your cell phone as well, if you have a smartphone. Or you may lose contact with your family members. A lot of you students live in fancy, but go to school in North Union. And you have to communicate with your family and friends. And it seemed to me a terrible thing that not only had this accident scarred these students um, and scarred the parents and scarred this community, but also had affected very deeply the way in which they could perform in school and interact with their family and friends uh, through communication. So on the instruction of the Prime Minister and on the instruction of Minister Daniel, we contacted um, Digicel and I am here to express gratitude to Digicel and the country manager John Gid Harry, who very quickly, as soon as we contacted him and said, you know, the students lost their telephones. He said, well, just give me the list of the names of the students that survived the tragedy, and we at Digicel will provide cell phones to replace what they lost. So we have to thank Digicel for the generosity in that regard. The phone that Digicel has provided is, is a Samsung Galaxy Ace 4. It is a smartphone and it has all of the modern smartphone features. It has the camera and internet connection and all of the things that you are accustomed to on a modern smartphone. It's a very good device. The Digicel has also included um, $20 credit on each of the phones and has provided seven days of data access via 4G. So thank you very much to Digicel for their generosity in this regard. But the smartphone is only part of the, the equation. Um, so the Prime Minister insisted that in addition to smartphones, um, we should acquire tablet computers so that students who lost their laptops would at least be able to get a tablet to get online do their SBAs, do their research, get certain information, send and receive emails, so that they could, even though it's not a laptop, they could be closer to where they were before the tragedy took place. So the Prime Minister, through his own connections, I believe at the National, at the National Lottery, the Prime Minister got Acer tablets for the affected students, um, the Acer Iconia tablets are very good machines. Um, they're very fast, they're very effective, good resolution. And between these tablets and the smartphones, I think that we have gone some ways at least to putting the students back in a position that they were before they lost their devices in the tragedy. And that is what this is about, trying to make the students and the families whole as much as is possible. Prime Minister Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez also expressed his own pleasure in providing the devices for the students. He noted how he was able to replace the devices for them. The newscast said that I heard it myself that Digicel was given the tablets and the phones. As the letter I read to you, Camilo had asked for the tablets and the phone.
But they're only giving the phones. And we thank the GCL. We thank Almighty God too for their generosity. So I was in Grenada. My secretary texted me. She called me and told me what was the position. I said, well, okay. I want you to call Mr. Celia at the National Lottery. I'm in Grenada, you know, I'm attending a meeting and I saw it and I came out. I saw the text she sent me. I said, organize with the lottery and let Mr. Seely make the arrangements to purchase the 11 tablets. He bought from the National Lottery six of them. Different places, the same place didn't have all. So he bought six from Computech, Acer, B1, with 16 gigabits of storage. They cost five. $199 each. Then buy five from Coates at $499 each. The difference being, while they are the same Acer B1 laptop, those from Coates is eight gigabytes. So what we are going to do well, as Camilla will tell you, he knows more about this. Eight gigabytes is plenty, plenty storage. So you don't have to worry about that. Massive storage that has. You're not going to be able to store it. You're not going to be able to fill it up. So what we are going to do... The older, those who are in the form four and form five, we're giving those with the 16 gigabytes. So, Rutan Boins would get one of those. Shemra Yark would get one. I'm a cricketer. Israel Roberts, also a cricketer. He will get one. Max Roy will get one. He's in form four. Tayana Boins, she's in Form 4, and Odysseus Day. Then these five will get those with the eight gigabytes. Chris, Chrisana Boins, Orlando Lewis, who are in Form 3. Onik Michael, who is in Form 2. Onik is here. Onik, yes. How, 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 how things going? You, you feeling better? The, the head has a little problem. Eh? You feeling okay? We go talk anyhow. I got a message. I got a message. Tyrrell Thomas and Candy and Sterling, they are in Form 1. They would get those. And that is how that is. Also at the ceremony to hand over smart devices to the students of FANCY, Consul General to Canada Fitzgerald Huggins also handed over diaries to the families of the deceased students. He also made monetary contributions to assist in developing a project in FANCY. I want to thank um, Minister Daniel and Tajo, Master of Ceremonies, for inviting us here today to present these memorabilia they came about as a result of a church service following the tragedy at Rock Gutter. The Canadian community and the groups wanted to show in a meaningful way that we feel we felt the pain and we did so in a very successful church service. It was well attended by several members of the Caribbean diaspora and you were well represented in Canada. We have here some books signed by many persons who attended. So we just thought that as a token of our grief, basically, to show our grief and how badly we felt about the incident and how much we share the pain suffered by 
persons who lost relatives that we present these books. Um, also included is a video of this church service and candles that were lit as a re remembrance of the lost ones. At that church service, there was a collection done and we collected just about 3,000 Canadian dollars that we have decided to put towards a project for the community. And we thought we'll let the people in the community decide what that project should be. And uh, we were advised that the community center would be refurbished and the, we, we have decided to outfit the center with computers. I think $3,000 would probably do us five or six computers. And I will personally put in an extra one from my pocket. So whatever, $3,000. <laughs> Canadian, Canadian dollars. So I am pretty much taking a leaf out of the Prime Minister's book where we like to dig our hands in our pockets. And So <laughs> you want to match me, sir? <laughs> Since the rock got a tragedy, Prime Minister Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez has bonded with the people of fancy. He pledged to continue to provide support for them in an effort to restore their lives to some sense of normalcy. Our API program continues with an IDC update. Stay with us. Our final presentation is the IEDC update, and on this evening's program, Communications Officer Jennifer Richardson focuses on the asphalt concrete pavement works currently taking place at the site and the current status of the Yambu River. The main buzz at the site of the Argyle International Airport at the moment surrounds the asphalt and hydraulic concrete pavement works currently taking place there. There is also significant buzz around the spanning of the Yambu River as it is imperative that this work is finished to facilitate the completion of the paving of the runway. We sat down on Tuesday, April 28th with engineer Rigoberto and Dalia Borges, the man in charge of the industrial works at the airport site for an update on those works. We spoke first about the asphalt work on the runway, which measures 9,000 feet long and 150 feet wide. And we know that you have started to put on the asphalt on the runway. Um, Sabemos que ya empezaron a colocar asfalto en la pista. How much of the runway have you placed asphalt on so far? Um, ¿Cuánto de, de la pista ha colocado asfalto? Sí, eh, actualmente comenzamos los trabajos. Currently we have started work on the two extremes of the runway. Colocamos los dos stopways de la pista. We've placed on the two stopways of the runway. Los stopways tienen una longitud de 60 metros por 45 metros. The stopway has a, a measurement of 60 meters by 40 meters. Estamos hablando de 196 pies por 147 pies. We are talking about 147 by 96 feet. In the both ends of the runway on the stopway, we have placed a total of 978 tons of asphalt thus far. How much of the, the actual runway, from that 7,000 plus feet of runway for asphalt, have you laid asphalt? Paro en asfalto en la pista hasta este momento. Actualmente tenemos colocado en la pista, por ambos extremos, 660 metros lineales. Es decir, unos 2,165 pies. Okay, so far in the two extremes of the runway, we have placed a total of 2,165 um, feet, which is equal to 660 lineal meters. That's what we have placed so far on the runway. Our runway is composed of uh, a design that was made 
originally and we have different layers we have the subgrade we have the base and then we have the asphalt layer the asphalt layer is divided into two layers one of eight centimeters which is the original the, the first base and then we have the final coat of the asphalt the final base of the asphalt the the layer that we're placing now is the the first base the first layer and it's a, a layer of eight centimeters the final layer would be the wearing course and that would be of five centimeters es la que hacíamos referencia que tenemos colocado unos 660 metros en total de la pista. So when we said before that we have 660 lineal meters, eh, we're talking about this layer, the first layer of the asphalt. Eh, a continuación, eh, nosotros... Eh, And afterwards, we'll continue to place the final layer. Y estimamos que estos trabajos, en general, todo el trabajo estará en unos 115 días de trabajo. We are estimating that all of this work is a been a total of 115 days of work that we have to do. Quiere decir que son días eh, reales, días ejecutados de trabajo. These are real days, it's days when we have to, to do work. Okay. Now, what is the, the, the significant difference between the base course and its course, right? What is the significant difference between the base course and the wearing course? ¿Cuál es la diferencia significativa entre la capa base y la capa de rodadura? Bueno, la diferencia es que la capa base lo que hace es eh, asimilar, vamos a decir que es la capa que admite eh, la, la carga sobre ella. Es la que se encarga de distribuir la carga en el pavimento. This this base coat layer um, is basically the layer that allows for uh, that carries the load, the load of the planes. Basically, they allow for the, the load to be bent on the on the runway. Y la capa de rodamiento lo que hace es dar una terminación más homogénea, una terminación que le permita una textura que en, en el aterrizaje de las aeronaves puedan producir una fricción y pueda realizarse el frenado. And the, the final coat, the final layer, is a layer that it allows basically for the smooth running of the planes over this layer, and it gives a bit of friction. It's a homogeneous layer, and it gives a bit of friction that allows for the taking off and the, the landing of the plane. You have given us a, a the real time 115, 15. 15, 115 days of work. Um, how many days have you had already? Nos han dicho el tiempo real de 115 días de días laborales. ¿Cuántos de ellos han usado o ese es a partir de ahora? Los 115 no, días. No, no, nosotros en realidad en días en realidad en días de colocación de estas 6125 toneladas hemos habremos trabajado no más de 12 días, 15 días. In, in these, um, the, layer, the amount of asphalt that we've placed so far, um, the 660 lineal meters or 2,165 feet, we've basically, basically only worked so far 12 to 15 days in placement of asphalt. Que inicialmente los trabajos de asfalto van por un proceso, ¿no? Eh, se comienza a poner, vamos a decir, que a implementar el desarrollo del trabajo en planta y, y las personas que van a trabajar en el proceso de colocación necesitan también de, de habituarse y creando costumbre a acoplarse el equipo. The, the situation as it is with asphalt is in the early stage in the placement of asphalt. There's a, there's a time that is needed where the persons who are involved in this task um, get the feel of it. They get accustomed, they develop the work habits. So in the early stage this is what we've been doing. So we are looking here to roughly about August to have the paved of the runway completed. Esta, estamos um, buscando como en agosto para tener la terminación de la pista. Sí, pensamos que más o menos en, en agosto debemos terminar si el tiempo nos ayuda, claro. So I am, we're saying that yes, in August we'll be finished the runway. Um, that is relying definitely that the weather permits us. Porque el tema de la colocación del asfalto es muy, es muy, vamos a decir que es incompatible con el agua. What I would like to say is that the, the placement of asphalt 
is not compatible with, with rain, with rainfall. Y por eso es que se extreman las medidas en los días que vamos a colocar. So this is why the measures are extreme in the days when we are placing asphalt. Y eh, por, por mala suerte para nosotros, el, el agua, la lluvia nos ha dañado bastante en los últimos días. Solo los últimos cuatro o cinco días que no ha aparecido la lluvia. ¿no? In the last days that went by, we've been having a lot of um, affectations from rain. Um, it's only in the last four or so days that we, did, we had really good weather. But before that, we had some days when we had um, problems with rainfall. Having looked at the pavement work on the runway and recognizing the importance of the spanning of the river to the completion of the runway, we sought to find out the status of that work. Now, I also recognize that the completion of the runway Yo también reconozco la terminación de la pista would depend heavily on the completion of the spanning of the river. Va a depender en el cruce de, cruce de los ríos. Um, are you optimistic that we're going to have that area completed so we can finish the runway? ¿Usted está optimístico que vamos a terminar esto en el tiempo para terminar la pista? Bueno, eh, el, yo pensamos que sí. Pensamos que el trabajo en el río, en las dos obras de fábrica, es un trabajo eh, algo complicado. We think we think that yes, we think that it can be done. Um, we would like to state that the the work in the river is a bit complicated, but que trabajan en el río. the persons who are working in the river are very good workers, and they know the importance of um, finishing the work in the river. But the work in the river is a bit complicated, but um, we expect that it will finish so that we could continue going forward with the rest of the work. As as much as you can. Um, tell us what the status of the spanning of the river is right now. Um, en lo mayor posibilidad que nos puede decir cuál es la situación con el cruce ahora de los ríos. In the 220 drainage structure, which is the Yambu River, three of the tunnels are up to 100% completed. That is including the arches as well. Y dos de los túneles están eh, ejecutados más o menos al 40%. And two of the tunnels are currently about 40% completion. There are five tunnels, um, three have been completed, three of our, are up to 100%, and two of them are currently in 40% completion. In the 191 um, drainage structure, we have um, dedicated in these last days um, more workers, more time and more attention to work that is being done there. Actualmente, el hormigón de las cimentaciones Está, diríamos, con un 60-70% de ejecución. Currently, we can say the concrete works on the base is about 60-70%. Ya comenzamos a montar los arcos. And we have started to um, place Ayer. the rings or the arches yesterday. Se comenzó a trabajar en la colocación de los arcos. Estamos listos para llegar más o menos, como ahí tenemos nada más, que son dos arcos. In this um, drainage structure, there's only two arches. Eh, estamos trabajando con vista a llegar hasta la zona donde tenemos las cimentaciones listas. What we're planning to do is we're going to work with the arches to carry them just up to that point where we have the base concrete already placed. Up to this point in this um, trimester, trimester, sorry, um, we have placed up to 43,870 17, sorry, cubic meters of concrete in different works on the site. De un total de 70,716 metros cúbicos. This is a total um, of 70,716 cubic meters in total that we have placed thus far on the site. Lo que representa un 62% del and this, volumen total de la obra. And this represents 62% of the total volume that has to be placed overall on the site. Okay. Is it possible, Andalia, for you to break that down for us, the, the, the cubic meters a bit? Um, for example, if, like for example, the commercial apron, how many slabs you have to put down and how many you have put down? Already? Es posible que nos pueden decir um, en mayor detalles, um, por ejemplo, en el um, plataforma de cargo, cuántos losas tiene que hacer y cuánto han hecho 
for example in the general apron we have 1801 slabs to be placed um, so far we have placed a total of 693 this is about 38.5 percent of the execution that we have to do there eh, aclaro que esto fue cierre día 20 de abril hoy en este momento i would like to clarify that this is up to the 20th of april up to this point the, the percentage would have been increased because this was the last report in the main apron we have a total of 2,576 slabs to be placed we have placed a total of 1,942 slabs which gives us a total of 75.4 percent completion in this area and the two turning heads the 04 turning head and the 22 turning head um, they have a total each of 822 slabs and these are 100 percent completed so we have completed the 820 slabs in both turning heads as it relates to all of the platforms in that we have to do in concrete, we have achieved a total of 65.5% of the total thus far. Calculamos que en el mes de julio agosto podamos llegar a, al, al final. We estimated that in July, the latest August, we should be finished all of the slabs. Yes, in the platform of the cargo, um, we are placing the base. As you see, he understood your question in English. So we are placing um, base material in the cargo apron. There we have to place 503 slabs. Eh, de esta parte que la hemos ido dejando por un problema de secuencia para el final. We have been leaving this for the end and it's basically because of a, a work sequence. We have to follow a particular work sequence, that's why we've been leaving it for the end. Pero está en secuencia por su proceso de trabajo actualmente. But it's, in, it's currently going in the sequence it should be going. Um, the work sequence is as it should be. This has been a presentation of the Agency for Public Information. You can join us next Tuesday evening at 8 for another program. Remember, you can join us via Facebook at the Agency for Public Information, SVG, and you can access our programs via our YouTube channel, Agency for Public Information, SVG. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Dion John, wishing you a pleasant evening and a wonderful weekend. Remember to join us at 5 this Saturday for Inside Story.